Hello, my name is Luke Munt, and I am the Digital Regional Coach for the Southeast. Today we're going to be talking about Seesaw and how to set up um, all of your class activities, how to add in um, student work, approve it, how to use the journal, and everything really Seesaw. This series is going to be picking up now with our students already being added in. If you have not added in your students, please vi view video one to get that information, how to log in with their school email. We're going to be using this document here for all of our Q and A's and uh, all of our support using Seesaw. That is tinyurl.com slash DPS Seesaw and that is linked in the description here on YouTube. But to get started, we're going to go to our first class today. So I'm already with my students added in. I only have one right now, but I'm ready to start giving work to my students. Now work in Seesaw is generally called an activity. So I wanna go add, and I'm gonna add in an activity. When I add in an activity, it's gonna take me to my library. And you can see I've already been busy on Seesaw and I've done different things. But I'm gonna pretend that I'm a brand new teacher to Seesaw and I'm gonna create my first activity. So that's always right here. The first activity I usually like to start with is a writing prompt. And I'll even give it a day, right? And then I would give out my instructions for the writing prompt, really great instructions. And then I teach kinder, let's just imagine, or any other lower L. I have very diverse learners and my students are just really starting to access reading. So I want to give voice instructions to my students. I can very, very easily add that right here by just clicking add voice instruction. It's gonna give me this lovely little microphone, very intuitive. And now it is recording my voice instructions. Hello class, welcome back after the weekend. Today we are going to be talking about what is your favorite pet that you have. And if you don't have a pet, you can tell me about your favorite person. I would very much like to see a full sentence out of all of my kindergartners. And if you can even give me a couple of sentences. Now, just like that, I've made a very personal connection to my students that they can hear my voice. Personally, during this time of remote learning, my daughter is in kindergarten and her teacher gives her voice instructions and she absolutely loves it, especially because my daughter is struggling to access reading and in full instructions. She can read basic sentences, but can't read instructions by herself. Or if students are from diverse uh, home backgrounds, then they can have access to hearing their teacher and uh, in English reading that. I can then add in an exemplar or instructions here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And since this is a writing, I'm going to go to my note. We will visit the other five options for adding an exemplar and student work here in just a little bit. But my notepad here is where I can add in my writing. So here's where I would give a very nice sentence exemplar for my students. Very nice about my favorite pet there. And then I'm going to attach it up here at the top right. I can then record myself again, or I can go back and edit it. And I'm going to attach it. So now my writing prompt for Monday has a title, has instructions, has my voice instructions, and has an exemplar. That is so awesome. I am really excited for this activity, and it was super easy to get my kids writing just a simple sentence but was a great way to get it going. So I'm gonna hit save, and it's gonna then ask me what I would I like to assign this. Of course, I wanna assign this to my kindergarten class. So I'm gonna go down here to Mr. Munn's class, and I'm going to send it to my class. But wait, what if I wanted to make this assignment more differentiated? So I wanted to challenge my best students to give me two full sentences, or maybe I just want my students to take a picture if they're having a really hard time writing. If I go edit students right here, I can then select which students I'm gonna send this activity out to. Now, I only have one right now in my class because my other students are being added in, but I would then choose which students I would add to this assignment. It will then say that it's assigned to one student and I can assign that out. So in just a couple of minutes, I have added in my first writing prompt to my students. 
This appears in their activity list. And I really like Seesaw because it's designed for little kids, and especially lower L, but really all for all kindergarten and middle school. And that it's very intuitive with bright colors, big words, and it's easy because the activity list is a flowing list. Whereas I add an activity and when the students add a, a response, this goes away. So their activity list should be blank, hopefully by the end of every day, but more likely at the end of every week, they should have this cleared out. Once it's cleared out, it's actually gonna to go to their journal and I'll show you that in just a couple of minutes, but let's go and add in a different type of activity. So for my next activity, I actually want them to do a little bit of math work. Right, give it a name, give it some more instructions. I would add voice instructions here, but we've already gone over that. So now I'm going to give them an example. And for this one, since it's math, I really want my kinders or my elementary students really drawing this out because I want to see their, their work. So I'm going to give them a simple problem. Right, and then down here we can do our bundling, our grouping, however you want with your students, right? So then I would have it all together over here. And so I can show my work in the drawing much easier for my students. So for like this activity, I would say, give me a problem and then show me how you would do that with counters. I can add that in right now and I have my exemplar of a drawing for my students. I can send that out again to just one student by editing, but then I also want to show you something really cool and that is our folders. In our folders here, I can assign the day of the week that the work is going to go to, or I can do a weekly folder. I really like the weekly folders because it allows students to accomplish things at different times throughout the week and as long as they get the week's work done. But if I want to say do one activity with my kids so I can get that attendance, then I can just do one day of the week. Don't worry about setting up, you know, Wednesday, April, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about that because the um, you're going to have one, a lot of folders, but then two, um, your your families really just want to see Wednesday work. They don't really want to see like a specific Wednesday because any work done from the previous week will probably either get bumped way down in their feed or get cleared out as they have completed all that. So this is a good way to help keep yourself organized um, and adds a little tag on there for your families as they're completing work too. So I would assign that out to my class, but I don't actually really want to assign that out. So I'm going to go back to my class here. I'm going to show you then some of our other ways to add in student work. So I'm going to go in activity here. I'm going to say a video response. Okay, I'll give them my instructions. And for this one, I actually want them to respond with a video. So I'm going to give an exemplar of a video response here. And you could ask them a simple prompt, like, what did you learn today? So I'm going to say, hey. hello, class. I'm so excited to see you all today. I miss you like crazy, but at least I can see you digitally like this. I really want to hear what is one thing you learned in class today on Monday, one thing that can be your takeaway for today's learning. So just like that, I have now given my students uh, a very easy response that would be kind of like my closure for the day. I would attach that on and I could assign that out to my class as well. Sign that out. Boom. I could easily do the same thing with a picture or I can upload different activities. So if I'm going to be doing option one in DPS, then I can upload those activities from my Google Drive um, with adding that in. But I really wanna show you guys now how to do a template. A template is unlike an exemplar in that it actually allows my students to complete the activity. So I'm gonna go assign activity here, create a new one. And instead of doing an exemplar for my students, I'm actually going to add something in as a template. 
This is where, again, you can add in for option one. So if there's a worksheet that's coming from option one, if I upload it here, it will make a copy for each student and then allow them to write on it. I can do a photo that then all of my students can respond back to. I can do a drawing that they can do, or I can add in a note here. And I really like note because I can ask, question of my students here and they can write back in the blanks here for me to write it so that they would have this piece of paper and since this is a template not an exemplar the students will be able to write in the blanks if I have a worksheet that say I really liked that I've been using in my kindergarten class or whatever grade level class before, I can just upload that worksheet here and my students can fill it in. The other day, my kindergarten uh, daughter was working on a number chart where she filled in certain boxes on the number chart and it made a nice little animal for her to do. She absolutely loved that. The teacher just uploaded that, uh, something that she does every spring with her kids and the students were able to complete that as well. So that is how I can do a template and that's the difference between a template and an exemplar. So that is pretty much all of my activities that I can create for my students, the video, the photo, the drawing, uploading things and using my notes. But I really want to point you guys here to our Seesaw community. The Seesaw community here it's right next to your library, is where you can find all sorts of resources. Since this class is set to kindergarten, it's recommending me kindergarten resources here. And this is full of a million different things that I can do with my students. So if you've seen the Mo Williams uh, doodles that I can assign those out to my kids, if I click on it here, right, it already has my instructions on here. It already has my teacher notes and this looks really cool. So I can then assign this out to my students. Now, is this DPS content? Is this option one curriculum from our wonderful CNI team? Unfortunately, it's not. This would be more supplemental, more activities that you could do with your kids. So know that that's a big caveat, but we know in remote learning, it's more than just doing worksheets and doing really hard academic rigorous work. We want to be making connections with our students. We want them to be doing different activities. So this could be something that I would want to do with my students. Another really fun one on the activities out there is scavenger hunts, right? So I can search for a scavenger hunt here because maybe it's starting to be springtime more and I want to do an outdoor scavenger hunt, or maybe I can do even do an indoor scavenger hunt if I know that there's going to be uh, uh, some bad weather coming out. Um, and so I can assign those to my students. And if I have diverse learners in my class speaking different languages, I can search for specific words and I can then give out different activities for my students that are coming from different languages. So I can assign this to just my students that would want something differentiated like this, or if I'm doing like an ELA S class, um, then I can assign this to my students and have all the instructions already in Spanish for me. It's so great. Again, not DPS curriculum, but really great resources that you could use for remote learning. Back to your class, I wanna highlight just a couple of more things before I get you out of here today. And one of those things that's really important is inviting our families. Our families are a really important part of our school communities. So I want to be able to add them in right here. So I'd go add families. And once I have my students in, it will give me an invite code for each of my families. It can even send an email out to each of my families, uh, giving them the access code. That's going to prompt them to download the Seesaw Family app. They just type in their code and they are connected. The Seesaw Family app is different than the Seesaw app for our students. And the big difference for that is one, it's a little bit more mobile friendly. So it's designed to be on your parents' smartphones, which many, many of them have. And uh, it will send them notifications when their students complete work, which is fantastic. I love when I get uh, notifications that my kindergarten daughter has completed her work because I know that while I'm trying to teach that she's getting her work done, um, it also allows you to communicate with your families. So once I've added in my families here, I can add an announcement and send this out to 
all of my students and all of my family members. When I give my announcement here, it will then prompt the, uh, the receiver family to translate that into whatever native language their phone is translated into. So if they speak Spanish, if they speak Chinese at home, it will prompt them to do that. If it's a more uh, uncommon language, it won't have all of them in Seesaw, but it does have many so that your families can get notifications through Seesaw. If you are using, say, School Messenger or School Deets or another messaging source, you can use this in addition to that so that your families can get those translation services or you can uh, uh, just use one of those others and not worry about Seesaw, but it is an option if you want to communicate out to your families. The other thing is, what happens when my students have completed work? So you can see here, I have 18 notifications of students that have completed work. And this example class that I'm using for this video series doesn't have any student work in it yet. So I'm going to switch over to another class. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. So it says I have 18 unapproved posts. So that means I have 18 activities that my students have done that I need to now review. So I'm gonna go review here, but you can also get to this from your inbox and you can get to your notifications there. Here, I can say that, oh, that was good, and then give comment. Right, so I can add in a comment. My student will then get a notification that they have received a uh, comment from their teacher. So I'm gonna post that right there. I am going to approve this. I know that it's not all the way done. This is a template that I uploaded with like a worksheet, but I'm gonna go ahead and approve that work. And then that one was not exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to, uh, oh, actually, sorry, I want to send that one back to the student here. That is a great drawing, so I can go through and I can approve that. And I'm just gonna go quickly through these here and you can see all of that right here. So that is my work. Once I have an approved an activity, it then goes to the student journal. So you can see those things that I have just approved right here in the journal. And if I'm using my Google account and I have turned on up here in my settings and my wrench, I have turned on that my student mode is email and Google. My students, sorry, and let me just show you this, sorry. Email is uh, Google here, and my students can see each other's work. Then my students will be able to like and comment on each other's work, which is a great way for those interpersonal connections for each other. We always just want to remind our students of great digital citizenship so they don't post inappropriate things on each other's work but it will be made live in the journal. The journal is kind of things that they've done in the past and activities is work that they have to do. So again, once they've completed the work, it will come to you to review. Then you, once you reviewed it, it will appear in the journal. And if you wanna see anything that a past student has done, you can just click on their name to see that one student's journal and you can see exactly what that one student has done and this will fill up very quickly. If you have any questions about Seesaw, please reach out to us as the Digital Regional Coach team back on our one pager that I referred to at the beginning, tinyurl.com slash DPS Seesaw. You can see who is your regional digital coach. Well, there's one of us for each region and you can look up by coach uh, and by school and we will be happy to answer any of your questions. We are here to support you. Thank you very much for all the hard work you're doing and for using Seesaw.